please turn in your Bibles this evening to the book of Hebrews. I'd like to read from Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. We began trying to study this morning about the importance of us saying words that are not murmuring and complaining. The people of God need to always remember that God knows all about our troubles and problems. God knows everything that's going on in our lives. And we need to pray that God will give us the strength and grace and God will help us to use the faith that God has given us that we would not worry about what's going on right now and that we would know that God's going to work everything out for our good and His glory. Looking at God's Word beginning tonight in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. The Word of God says that without faith it is impossible to please God or to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. All of us as the people of God, we must be willing to serve and to sacrifice. We must be willing to suffer for Christ's sake. We must believe that God is going to bless us when we do that. Everybody that's mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11, all the different ones that the Word of God describes here, they all were people that had great faith in God. Some of them had to wait a long time before they ever experienced the joy that follows the suffering that we have to do sometimes. First one that's mentioned after Hebrews 11, 6 and Hebrews 11, 7, the Word of God says that by faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. So Noah went through a lot of suffering for a long time before he ever received the, the reward that God gave him for what he went through. Noah suffered for about a hundred years that Noah was building the ark. Noah suffered ridicule and reproach and, and he just kept on going. He could have murmured and complained. We don't have any record of Noah ever murmuring and complaining during that period of time. He believed God. He believed that God was. He believed that God had told him to build the ark and he was building the ark by faith believing that God was going to do what he said he was going to do. And eventually Noah received the reward for all those years of suffering and serving and doing what God told him to do. Likewise the next person that's mentioned in Hebrews 11 8 the word of God says that by faith Abraham when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance obeyed and he went out not knowing whither he went. So Abraham left his father and his kindred and he left his country and he went out to a place that God was going to lead him to but Noah didn't immediately get his reward and Abraham did not immediately get his reward. But Abraham did get a reward. But he went out not knowing where he went. He trusted in God. He walked by faith. No doubt was ridiculed and reproached for leaving everything he left to obey God. He went out. He obeyed God. And he was looking for a country that had foundations whose builder and maker is God. And so he was going toward that place God had told him that he would give to him. Uh, another occasion in Abraham's life is mentioned, come down in your Bibles to verse 17. Verse 17 says, By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promise offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. He had waited a long time for Isaac. You remember that Abraham and Sarah could not have children and it was in their old age 
when they were about a hundred years old, it was in their old age, that God gave them Isaac. And then God told Abraham, take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, take him up in that mountain and offer him as a sacrifice. That took a great amount of faith. And verse 19 says that Abraham was accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. So Abraham carried his son up there on that mountain to offer Isaac as a burnt offering and a sacrifice. By faith he did that. I want you to know, brethren, that you and I as the people of God, we must begin to have greater faith than what we have now. We must begin to walk by faith. We must begin to live by faith. We must begin to trust God more and more and eventually know that God always is going to help you and bless you when you do what God tells you to do. God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Without faith, you don't believe that. Without faith, all you're going to do is murmur and complain Abraham could have murmured and complained about a lot of things God told him to do, but he didn't do that. He believed that God was going to raise his son up from the dead. Then you come down to verse 24, and this is the last one we'll mention here in Hebrews chapter 11, but in verse 24, the word of God tells us about, about Moses. And Moses suffered a lot. Moses served God. Moses made great sacrifices. Did Moses get an immediate reward for the suffering and, and everything that he went through. Did Moses immediately get the reward? No, not immediately. The Word of God says in Hebrews 11, 24, By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. He believed God was going to reward him for doing what God was calling him to do, to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt. He was the son of Pharaoh and Pharaoh's daughter. He was living in the palace. He had all the riches. He had all the convenience. He had everything a man could want. And God called him to go and lead the children of Israel out. And it took great faith for Moses to do that. And he suffered greatly for doing what God was telling him to do. He did not immediately get a reward, but God did reward Moses for doing what God was calling him to do. And I want you to notice verse 27. Verse 27, by faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Brethren, until we can see God as he is, and until we can really see that God is omnipotent and God is on his throne, and until we can see that God loves us with an everlasting love, and until we can see and know that God is going to take care of us no matter what he calls on us to do, until we can see that, we'll never be able to walk by faith like the people that are described here in, in Hebrews chapter 11. They were all looking forward to a blessing that God had promised them that he would give them. Turn now to Hebrews chapter 12. I'm trying to reiterate the fact that you and I as a people of God, we sometimes have to suffer and sometimes suffer a long time. But we better not be murmuring and complaining about the suffering. We better be believing that what God has promised he will carry out. In uh, Hebrews chapter 12, look at... Just verse 2 for the sake of time. Hebrews 12 verse 2 tells us we need to be looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus today is on his throne. He was, while he was suffering, while he was on the cross, while he was being persecuted, while he was living his life here on this earth, the Bible says he was looking beyond all those sufferings. The reason Jesus did not murmur and complain is because he was not looking at those sufferings. He was looking beyond those sufferings. Look at the wording again. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him. Now, what was the joy 
that was set before him. There are several joys. One is him saving his people from their sins. But what was the other joy? Going back to the Father. Going back and sitting on his throne. Going back to get the glory that he once had. And who for the joy, he knew what was on the other side of the cross. He knew what was on the other side of the grave. He knew what was on the other side of all the other suffering. And he trusted in God. And you and I as a people of God, we need to pray, God help me to be willing to suffer whatever I have to go through in my life. Help me to believe that you are a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Help me, Lord, to trust in you. Help me to have faith in you no matter what happens in my life. Now, brethren, there's going to be some difficult things you're going to have to go through in your life. And unless you have faith in God, you're going to be angry with God and you're going to murmur and you're going to complain about the problems and the troubles you have. But if you really believe that God loves you and God is going to bring you through that valley, if you believe that God does care for you and goodness and mercy is, are going to follow you all the days of your life, if you believe that God is, is still on his throne and God's going to take care of you and everything that happens is for your good and his glory, then you can rejoice even in the middle of all the suffering that you're going through in your life. Now, I know everybody's familiar with Job, but I want us to go back and look at Job because I want you to see the thing that helped Job face all that he faced in his life is that he was looking beyond those troubles he was in right then. Look in your Bibles in Job. First, look at Job 1.1. 1, 1. I want you to see what kind of man, uh, what kind of a man Job was before Satan ever began to attack him. In Job 1 and verse 1, and I believe this is the reason that God said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? Job was a servant of God. He was a servant of God that loved God and feared God and obeyed God. Look at Job 1 verse 1. This is before all the other trouble came. The scripture says in Job 1, 1, there was a man in the land of us whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed or shunned evil. He was a man that walked in a way that pleased God. He was a man that loved God. He was a man that feared God. He was a man that was already suffering for Christ's sake before all these other afflictions ever came in his life. Now to turn to Job chapter 1. We're not going to go through the sequence of all the different things he lost. He lost all his possessions. He lost all ten of his children. And in the middle of all that loss, do you know what you and I might have done? We might have been murmuring and complaining and crying and weeping. We might have gone so far that we might have even been angry with God for taking away everything that we thought was most precious in our lives. It's a hard thing, brethren, to lose your possessions and lose all of them. It's also a hard thing to lose your children. But I'll tell you what, brethren, when you, you as a people of God, when you really believe that God is and that God loves you and that God is perfect and God is holy, no matter what happens in your life, you can say what Job did in Job 1, verse 20. The Word of God says, Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down on the ground and worshipped and said, Naked came I out of my, my, out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sinned not nor charged God foolishly. There were no words that came out of Job's mouth where he was angry with God. There were no words that came out of Job's mouth where he was talking about how horrible it was. He, he wasn't saying, God's not fair. This isn't right that I've served the Lord and then have to go through what I'm going through. He didn't do that at all. You know why? I want you to see that he was not looking at those circumstances and conditions. He was looking at what's on the other side of that. Watch this carefully now. Turning in, in your Bibles to Job chapter 19. Job chapter 19 I believe that God has a reason for us to keep looking tonight at the fact that we as a people of God who love God, if we are trying to serve God, we need to know troubles are going to come. 
All that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Troubles are going to come. But when those troubles come, it is imperative, it's important, it is required that we not murmur and complain about what we're having to go through. In Job chapter 19, Job 19 beginning in verse 23, Job said, oh, that my words were, were now written. <laughs> they were, weren't they? God had them written down. This was a request Job made. Oh, that my words were now written. Oh, that they were printed in a book. That they were graven. These are good words Job is about to speak. He said, I want everybody to know what I'm about to say. I want these words to be written down. I want them to be written, written down in a book. Because these are important words for you and me to remember when we're going through the kind of trials of our faith like Job was going through in his life. In verse 24, that they were graven with an iron pen and led in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer liveth. In the middle of all of that trouble, what did he know? First he says, I know that my Redeemer, Redeemer liveth right now. And that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. What's his mind going forward to in the middle of all of his trouble? He's going back. His mind is going forward all the way. To the, to the coming of Christ in the end of this time world. One day Jesus is coming back is what he's saying. And that's what he was looking forward to. He says in verse 26, And though after my skin worms destroy this body, he felt like I'm fixing to die. I'm fixing to go right down to the grave. Skin worms are about to destroy my body. But I want you to know I'm looking beyond the present troubles I'm in. I'm looking forward to what's ahead. And one day Jesus is coming back. And though after these skin, wor skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh I shall see God. What was his confidence in? His confidence was in God. What was his faith in? His faith was in God. What was his joy in? His joy was in believing that one day God was going to raise him from the dust of the earth and he was going to be with God forever. He says that in my flesh shall I see God whom I shall see for myself and mine eyes shall behold and not another though my reins be consumed within me. So what's Job saying here? He's saying in the middle of all these troubles I'm going to soon die. It's soon going to all be over. Did you know that's true of all of us? There's some young people here, but I want you to know our life is going by in a hurry. I can remember we've got little children here in the church. We've got young boys, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 years old. I remember when I was that age sitting in the house of God. I remember when I was 21, 22, 23 years old like some of the others of you. But I'll tell you what, it is amazing how quickly your life is going to go by. Teach us to number our days and apply our hearts unto wisdom. Teach us, Lord, that when troubles do come, teach us that we need to remember you do love us and you know about our problems and teach us to know there's going to be an end to those troubles that we're having. Now, turning your Bibles to Job 23. <clears throat> Here again, what Job is doing is in the middle of all his afflictions and problems and trouble, in the middle of losing everything, he's looking beyond those days to a day when things are going to be better. In Job chapter 23, listen to verses 8, 9, and 10. Job says in Job 23, 8, Behold, I go forward, but he is not there. And backward, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand where he doth work, but I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand that I cannot see him. You know what I would be doing right there? I'd be pitching a fit. You know, I'm going through all this trouble and I can't find God. And he says, and I believe it's true, God hid himself from Job. And then here's the wonderful words that Job spake in verse 10. He says, but he knoweth the way that I take. And when he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. What's he doing? He's going beyond the troubles. He says, I know what I'm going through. And I know God has hidden himself from me. But one day, 
He's going to bring me forth as gold tried in the fire. God's going to do that. Every time, you've had, you, every time you have had to go through a fiery trial, God has been with you and he's brought you out on the other side. The word of God says that Jesus is like a refiner's fire. And that refiner's fire will purify your life. It'll burn away the dross. God can make you realize the things of this world are just not worth worrying about. God is worthy of your faith in him. God is worthy of you being willing to suffer for his sake like Job did and it's important that you look beyond those days of suffering and know like Job did when he's finished with me I'm going to come forth as gold tried in the fire and did he did he come forth as gold tried in the fire was his latter end a good end go in your Bibles to Job chapter 42 and verse 10 Job chapter 42 and verse 10 the word of God says, And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. You think that was hard for Job to do, to pray for his friends? After all they had accused him of, you think it was hard for him to pray for him? I believe it was. But when he prayed for his friends, that's when the Lord turned his captivity. And then the last part of that verse says, Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. What did God do? In all those sufferings that Job was going through, God was with him. And when it was all over, he came forth as gold tried in the fire. And the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Have you ever been through some difficult times in your life and then when it was all over, you could honestly, truthfully say, I'm better off now than I was before. Now you may not be better off financially. In fact, you may lose all the money you've got. But you'll be better off spiritually after God has burned away some of that dross in your life. And so it's good for us. David said it's good for me that I've been afflicted. It's good for me to be afflicted. I don't like it while it's going on, but I better not be murmuring and complaining about whatever I'm having to go through in life because there's something far better beyond that. You know, I, I just had this thought about David. When Nathan went to David and told David about, he gave him a, an analogy, and David wanted the man kill that Nathan had described. And then Nathan said, Thou art the man, and that son that you have, God's going to take away his life. You know what David did right then? You know what David did? David stripped himself, he got down on the ground, and he cried, and he prayed, and he begged God, and he fasted, and he prayed, and he wouldn't eat, and he prayed, and he prayed, and prayed, and prayed. For seven days he prayed, God please spare my child's life. And then the child died. And after the child died, David didn't get mad at God. David arose, he washed himself, he cleaned himself up, he worshipped God, and he ate, and he said, He shall not return to me. But I'm going to him. What was he doing right there? He was looking ahead. He was looking ahead. You know what it takes to look ahead when you're in the middle of horrible situations in your life? You know what it takes? It takes great faith for you, look, for you to look beyond the troubles of today to whatever's ahead. And I'm not just talking about heaven when you die. I'm talking about there can be greater things, wonderful things here on this earth for you than you've ever known before. You know, sometimes we sing that song, Oh, for a closer walk with God. You know what it usually takes for you to have a closer walk with God? It takes some troubles and trials and afflictions and tribulations. 
And during those troubles and trials and afflictions and tribulations, you might be like those two disciples that we studied about this morning. That their communication, everything they were talking about, they were just sad because of the circumstance and conditions. But you and I as a people of God, we ought not to be that way and we ought not to be sad. We ought not to be saying negative things. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When he's finished with me, I'm going to come forth as gold tried in the fire. That's confidence in God. Do you remember Eli the priest? Do you remember what he did? Do you remember what Eli the priest failed to do? Eli the priest was a, he was a bad daddy. I'm going to say it like that. Eli the priest was a bad daddy. His children did wrong and he restrained them not. He let them do what they wanted to do. You know what's going to happen when you let your children do what they want to do? You know what's going to happen? You're going to experience the same kind of hell and heartache that Eli the priest did. Samuel had to go to that man who had raised him. He had to go to Eli the priest and say, God's going to do a horrible thing in your life. And he told him what he was going to do, what God was going to do. You know what Eli the priest said? It's the Lord. Let him do what seemeth him good. I deserve what I'm about to experience. It's the Lord. The chastening hand of God is not pleasant at all. And I pray that God will help all of us to understand that we need to know that even chastening can bring forth peaceable fruit after we endure that chastening as a son that loves his father and knows that his father loves him. Go with me in closing. Go back to the New Testament just a moment. Go with me to. Go to 1 Peter chapter 4. There are a lot of other scriptures in the New Testament. But for the sake of time. Just go to 1 Peter chapter 4. We'll close here in 1 Peter chapter 4. Beginning in verse 12. Are you going to have the kinds of troubles that Job did? Are you going to have the kind of troubles that Noah did you're going to have the kind of troubles that Abraham did you will if you serve the Lord you will have those kinds of troubles if you walk by faith what you need to remember it is impossible to please God and that's what we all ought to want to do is please God it's impossible to please him without faith and he that comes to God must believe that God is that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. 1 Peter chapter 4, listen to verses 12 and 13. The word of God says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the, what are the next two words there? Fiery, Fiery trial. There's one, one thing, two things I'm really afraid of. One's fire, the other one's electricity. I don't like either one of them. I'll handle coyote and fox and wild animals, but I don't like electricity and I don't like fire. Fiery trials. I don't want to go through fiery trials. If God would just say, you choose. Do you want to go through fiery trials? I'd say, mm, I'll pass. I don't want to go through fiery trials, but I'm going to and you're going to. And we better not complain when it happens. <laughs> Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is not may, but which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. What do you have to do in order to experience that exceeding joy in the kingdom of heaven? What do you have to do? You have to be willing to suffer for Christ's sake. May God help all of us tonight to understand that when, when trouble comes, and it's going to come in my life and yours, and when trouble comes, may God help us not to murmur and complain, but may God help us to look beyond that moment and know that something better is ahead because our God whom we serve, our God is on his throne and our God loves us, even though the devil will tell you sometimes he doesn't. God does, even in the fiery trials.